<sighs> well, it's time to change the gas bottle because we're getting ready to go off and so we're prepping the boat. We've got three weeks until our contract runs out here and we've got a lot of things to do in those three weeks so uh, we just need to get on with it. So from now on the boat is going to be kept fully stocked with gas, uh, fully stocked with water and we're going to start building up the canned supplies that we need to take with us. Uh, ropes and things will have to be taken off and cleaned, all the green removed. So we are not short of things to do. When we get a weather window near the end of the month we want to be ready to go. And you've just got to be ready for it and the only way to do that is put the work in. So gas first, get all the bills paid and make sure that from this point forward we only pay cash at the marina so that we can go as soon as we get a good weather window. Well at the moment I'm concerned with uh, how Beverly is going to rescue me. So what I'm doing is I am creating a sling. You need two measurements. The first is the distance between the two uh, stanchions where you will be rolling the casualty aboard. So those need to be close to the mast. Now unfortunately ours has a um, shroud there but it is still usable. So that's the one distance you need and the next distance is the height of your freeboard. So those are the two measurements you need to make. When you're doing the distance between the two stanchions do check it on both sides because they can be different. For instance on this boat uh, one is 1 meter 90 whereas on the other side is 1 meter 80. Always go for the smallest size. So this is my design. <laughs> Back of the postcard sort of thing. Now I will be putting this up on the web um, in the blog so um, I'll have the proper design there um, so that you can see it. But the distance um, from the base to the point will be twice the height of the freeboard and then the base will be the distance between the stanchions. Well, <laughs> we've had a, a bit of a peculiar situation arise, peculiar for us at any rate. Um, over the time that we've been sailing and particularly in recent months we've had a lot of people who watch our channel who have come up and said to us, I like what you do, here's a bottle of wine, um, here's a thing, we've, we've had people send us boxes through the mail, they've arrived here at the um, at the marina and it's absolutely wonderful to receive those things and, and quite often they come out of the blue, we've got no idea they're coming and it's lovely to get them and I, I could go through a list of all the names of people who have given us things and all the rest of it and people who've come here to visit us but it might be in a whole episode in itself if I started doing that and not everybody likes their name on YouTube. So I'll just say thank you to everybody who has done that. Um, but the thing that happened to us recently that was a little unusual for us is somebody said I want to send you some cash and we thought what? Um, and we, d we didn't know what to do about it. Uh, we don't have a Patreon account, we don't. We haven't set one up, um, we, we have nothing like that. As you know, we just run the channel on YouTube and it just, it's what it is. You know, we we, uh, we get by on our, our things. Occasionally if we sell a, a Mr D through our affiliate link, we get a, the equivalent of a bottle of wine coming through to us. But all of a sudden somebody wanted to give us some money because uh, they appreciated what we were doing for them. And so what we've done is we've set up a coffee account, a co hyphen fire. The link is down below in the description. And true to um, the name of the account, we have gone out and bought some hand roasted Colombian coffee. We wouldn't normally buy this stuff, but we've had it purchased for us. And so we've gone and got ourselves a speciality coffee. And so I'll just say thank you to uh, the person who donated that to us. Uh, we're going to leave the link to the... Um, coffee thing in the description below. We'll probably never mention it again but it's down there if anybody wants it. And I think normal service will be resumed from this point forward. My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep and work. I am not boring, I just
I'm about halfway through my hand roasted Colombian coffee. Um, I once bought some Jamaican Blue Mountain, which is a very expensive coffee. It was £35 a kilogram, and this was like 20 years ago. God knows what it would cost today. And I tried the Jamaican Blue Mountain, and I wondered what all the fuss was about. It didn't seem to ring any bells for me, and in the end I decided it was actually just a very good cup of coffee. You could give it to anyone and they'd enjoy it. Yeah, maybe that's why it's famous. I think this stuff's tending the same way. It doesn't have a, a lot of strong flavours, it doesn't have a lot of harshness, or it doesn't have a lot of bitterness that some stronger coffees have. This is just a good cup of coffee. Um, yeah, I'll maybe just put another half scoop in next time. To make my cradle, I have bought 30 metres of 20 millimetre webbing. Now, this webbing has got a breaking strain of 750 kilograms. Trust me, even when I was really heavy, I was never that heavy. Uh, I've also got some um, circles. Do they have a breaking strain of 750 kilograms? <laughs> I have to be honest, I don't know what the breaking strain of these are, but they'll be pretty tough because um, they're about um, four millimetres in diameter, so that's pretty tough, tough for steel. I need to go on doing this. I see there's a lot of rooting going on in cupboards. Oh yeah, it's only to explain something. Um, on our harnesses, um, there are two different types of uh, stitching um, that they've used. This one which is like a, a big zigzag and this one which is a cross pattern. Um, I found that in what I'm doing that this zigzag is really easy to do uh, so that's why I'm using it because all I can do is I can keep the um, fabric the same way and I can go forward on one and reverse on the other so that I don't have to mess about um, but this is where I also got the 12 centimeter seam from because this is what they're using on <laughs> harnesses so if it's good enough for harnesses it's good enough for us yeah, yeah that's fine exciting times <laughs> yeah my first square has gone in um, <laughs> It's a good thing I've, uh, don't worry about the design, it will be on the web. <laughs> but I've changed the design about four times already um, as I've, I'm making it. <laughs> I've had to change my computer model about three times. Exactly. Um, but um, at the centre section of uh, my sling, I want it as if it's a ladder so that um, you can actually use the sling to scramble up the side of the boat. So uh, what I've got here, this is my first step going in and um, I've got, um, basically that will be for one foot and on this side, once I cut it out, will be the other foot. Um, so that you'll do one foot and then the next foot. It'll also provide um, some, some support for anybody lying in the sling that you're hoisting up because it stops the straps moving around. Correct. Um, and then the sides of it um, can be any old cloth you have or something like that, but I want the ladder section in the middle. the rather sad looking bungees that have just come off our um, bi fender and um, they've lost all their stretch, they've got nothing left in them so these are going to be replaced with fresh bungee. It's not a big job. I just have to... This is one of the few instances where you can actually tie a granny knot on a boat and get away with it because you don't ever want it untied again. Uh, whereas in this end here I just had a couple of loops that I put through the uh, other end of the fender and that was all it took so that's all I've got to do. A couple of granny nuts here, a little loop down at the bottom, seize it off, bang, job done. Ah. Whoop! 
What on earth? <laughs> like I said earlier, I'm just trying to make sure that um, I haven't got my uh, sides twisted. And um, so this is my ladder. This is my side. I've bought some cargo netting for this section here. So I'm just bringing them down to where they join and I'm just making sure that they are... Th th there's no twists because I had got my knickers in a twist earlier um, and it would have been twisted, you know, but I, there's no harm in just checking, checking and... Oh, shot car, checking again. <laughs> rather thin and skinny but that's because this is where our deck is and um, because our freeboard is 1 meter 20 here where the tape measure is is where the water is going to be now I wanted to be able to be here at this position and, and have most of my neck supported so I'm going to put that, I'm going to lie here. <laughs> this is the water. You've just got to... Hang on, Gainer Casualty. <laughs> this is the water. You've just got to imagine this is the water section. So you're now lying in the water? I'm lying in the water. All right, can I just move around? Uh, so this end here... Yeah. ...will have a ring attached to it, and then that will be attached to a halyard. Correct. And basically that end will lift up and basically roll you up and onto the boat. That's the plan. Yeah, you've got to put something into these triangles here, haven't you? Yeah. I do. I do. I need to do something on the sides because this is the ladder. This is the ladder section. And um, I've nearly uh, used up all of my 30 metres um, just to do the ladder and the side sections. That's my left over under the seat, so... For 30 metres, I need more cord. So what I've done is I made a bag for um, my sling. So this, um, so I'm going to get some lettering to say recovery sling. Bev's just got to buy it for me. Um, but basically, I've made a bag. And uh, here it is. <laughs> I've got it in um, some fabric that I had um, because I don't want anything tangling. But let's go and see it in operation, shall we? <laughs> Scary stuff. I had hoped to um, show you uh, this in operation, um, but um, the frown, it's frowned upon ju uh, purposely jumping into the marina, plus it's cold. So uh, Wilson's uh, doing the job of my casualty at the moment, um, and this is the general idea. But Wilson's a bit small for your casualty. He is a bit small, uh, but at the end of the day, the principle is there. Maybe not perfect, but it's there. 